Our scripture today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. Uh, I'll give you a moment if you want to follow along in your pew Bible to look that up. Uh, we'll say a prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this reading which we're about to read. We thank you, Lord, for the knowledge that your Spirit gives us that this is indeed your word. We are blessed by hearing it. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy in giving it to us. We pray also for your mercy and for the sermon, that the expounding on the Word may be pleasing and honoring to you, that it might be used for your glory, and that you may be able to use it somehow. We thank you, Lord, for your glorious love, and we pray this in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. Hear now God's Word. An expert of the law stood up to test Jesus. He said, Teacher, What must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, the expert answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. (coughs) Wanting to vindicate himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and took off, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite. When he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came upon him, and when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, treating them with oil and wine. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. To be my neighbor. Our scripture today is in some ways a continuation from our, our scripture of last week. Uh, if you remember last week, we talked about Gehazi uh, taking advantage of Naaman. And one of the reasons he felt he could take advantage of him is because Naaman was a foreigner, not part of them, you know. And, and so we talked about neighbors and things like that. This is a continuation of that thought, of that theme, maybe not of the scripture. And being a continuation, it's a reminder of how Scripture themes are all throughout the uh, Bible. I've mentioned this before, that sometimes we call ourselves, label ourselves New Testament uh, Christians, uh, but it's a, it's a false label. It's, a, it's an unhelpful label. You cannot take the New Testament out of the Bible and have it to be completely intact. Without the Hebrew Bible to support it, uh, the New Testament wouldn't exist. The, New, the Old Testament doesn't, it's not even a supplement to it. It's not even a, uh, a companion piece to it. The Old Testament is foundational to, to, to the uh, New. If it weren't for what happened then, what's happening now wouldn't happen. And so even as we look at our Scripture, we see that they relied upon, Jesus relied upon the Old Testament, Leviticus and De- De- Deuteronomy to uh, teach, teach us. And so an expert of law who knew all of this, all about the the, the, uh, Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, stood up, and this is an important context here, to test Jesus. This wasn't just a curious question on his part. It wasn't something that he was just wondering. It was something he already had an opinion about. And he wanted to see if Jesus was right in his opinion so that he then can fight Jesus on Jesus' opinion. Um, so he asked the question, uh, again, to test Jesus. 
what must I do to inherit eternal life? For the Jewish people to inherit eternal life, to be righteous before God is to follow the uh, laws. Jesus, sensing the trap and understanding his motivation, asked him instead, asking, answering a question with the question, what is written by the law and what do you read there? <clears throat> we know this. We've heard it lots. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. And he combines the other Scripture into one, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus had no argument. You're right. That's exactly right. You have given the right answer, do this, and, and you will live. There's no argument to be had there. <clears throat> the expert on the law, he had nothing to go on. Jesus agreed with him. Totally. But the expert of law wanted a fight. He wanted to prove Jesus wrong, and so he asked the question, then, who is my neighbor? You see, for the expert of law, he's not just an expert of law, he's also a defender of the law. As a teacher of the law, he defends it. This and the law is not just rules to live by within their society. The law is for the Jewish people, for the Israelites, their society. It's their culture. It's their identity. It's who they are. He's not just a keeper of the law as an expert. He's a keeper of culture. He's the keeper of their very way of life. Their law is their identity marker. It's who they are. So we ask Jesus, who pals around with everybody who hangs out with the sinners, the breakers of, of, of the, uh, the law, those who, by their very action, place themselves outside of society, who is my neighbor? Jesus, tell me, who is part of this culture? Part of this I, 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 I identity? Now, we know the answer. Who is my neighbor? What's the answer to that? Everyone, right? Everyone. Everyone is my neighbor. Now, what's the definition of neighbor? Anyone know? Definition of neighbor, anyone take a crack? It's okay, it's not a trick question. It is what you think it, it is. Neighbor. A person living near or next door uh, to the speaker or person referred to. Our garden was the envy of the neighbors. Yeah, the, those who are around us. Our garden's not. The, this lack of rain has really hurt it a lot. Uh, but it's also a verb. Uh, to be situated next to or very near the square neighbors of the old quarter of the town. So neighbor is very simply divine, uh, defined as those who are near. Jesus very simply could have told him, of course Jesus thinks neighbors more Jesus could have told him, everybody is your neighbor, but he doesn't do that. You ask the teacher of the law, you say, everybody's your neighbor. You know, his mind, everybody is those who follow the, the, the law. Jesus instead told the story. Story about a man. Who is this man? We have no idea who the man is. From Jesus' point of view and those who are listening, the man is Jewish. He got... He got uh, um, uh, robbed, beaten, near death. And then these two people come along. These two people are also upholders of culture, upholders of society, upholders of Israelite identity. And they walk by. And the man hearing this, the expert of the law, what Jesus is saying then, that those two people did not see the man who's laying in the dirt as their neighbor. He left. A Samaritan walks by. Samaritans are hated. I mean, hated, hated. In our political climate, the, the Jews hate the Samaritans more than Republicans hate Democrats, and Democrats hate re, 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 Republicans. It's bad. In fact, so bad it is that when, in that time, the, um, if a Samaritan was walking down the road in a Jewish town, and a Jew was walking on the same side of the street, he would cross to the other side so he would not have to be 
within any distance of that person. They were hated. Despised for what they rep, 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 represented. And what they represented is a whole other sermon. And we won't get in, in, into that today. But they were despised. He took the man, again, who was probably Jewish, and he treated him. He um, took oil and wine, treated his wounds. He uh, put him on his own animal. He brought him to the inn. He took care of him. He spent the night with him. The next day, he took out two denarii. One denarii was equal to a day's wage. He took two days' wages. He gave it to the innkeeper and he said, if you spend more, I will come back and repay you. Jesus' question to the guy was not the answer he wanted to hear. The guy's question was what? Who is my neighbor? Jesus asked instead which of the three was a neighbor to the man who had been waylaid. The man's, question, the man's answer he wouldn't even deign to say Samaritan. He said instead, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus' answer was then to the question, who is my neighbor? The answer is, go and be a neighbor. The man was asking the wrong question. That was Jesus' answer to him. It doesn't matter who your neighbor is. You be a neighbor. And when you are a neighbor, everyone is your neighbor. When we have neighbors, if I say that um, Charlie, who lives next to me, is my neighbor, cannot Charlie say then that I am his neighbor? Strict definition of neighbor shows that it's not a one-way street. It's two ways. Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan makes that bigger. It's not about who is my neighbor. It's about me being a neighbor to somebody else. March 20th, I learned, is or around there, is an important Sunday in the life of the Presbyterian Church. Anyone know what that day is in the life of the Presbyterian Church? Nobody. Maybe. It's Mr. Rogers' day. Mr. Rogers is a pres- was a Presbyterian minister, ordained in the Presbyterian church, lived in Latrobe, and went to school, seminary, at Pittsburgh Theological Seminary, where I grad- grad- graduated from. <clears throat> On March 20th, they talk about Mr. Rogers and the ministry that he did. When he was ordained, he was not ordained to any church, but he was one of the very first. When he was uh, ordained in 1960-something, um, ordained outside of the church. Not very many people had done that. His whole story, his whole shtick is, won't you be my neighbor? In fact, if you go on YouTube, I wanted to show it, but it's too long, that's six, six minutes it shows Mr. Rogers singing the theme song to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, uh, but they spliced it together over the years. At the beginning of the theme song, he is, um, uh, it's 1965, the first episode of uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood or somewhere around there. And the last uh, frame is year 2000 when they stopped. And so he ages throughout the song. Beautiful uh, thing. The song never changed through it. Always remained the same. The story, the message was always the same. Won't you be my neighbor? Recently I read a sermon that he started, but this isn't the end of it. You see, won't you be be my neighbor is a great message, inviting anyone to be his neighbor. But the direction is, again, we talked about this last week, from there to us, come to me, be my neighbor. This man who did the the sermon on Mr. Rogers said that it changes for today a little bit. No longer won't you be my neighbor, but won't you let me be your neighbor? The story of the Good Samaritan is is exactly about that. Won't you let me be your neighbor? 
we are by Jesus' command and, and example in this story of the Good Samaritan tasked to be neighbors with those whom we encounter. What is a neighbor? Those who are beside. It's not about being a neighbor to the world. It's about being a neighbor to that person that you encounter in that moment. Whoever it might be. Whatever their background may be. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's not always easy. We encounter people that vex us. People that try our patience. People that we don't understand. And yet, as Jesus showed in his story, the Samaritan was neighborly to the person who saw him as an enemy. So we too are to be neighbors to those whom we encounter. Not only won't you be my neighbor, but as the Presbyterian minister says, let me be your neighbor. And I pray that we try that and we do that throughout our life through through the love of of, uh, Christ. Share with you this benediction. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do His will, working in us that that which is pleasing in His sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.